our next generation portable is officially named PlayStation Vita. Vita. Vita does indeed mean life. Well, at least that's what I keep telling myself anyway. Anytime you want to broach some bad news, such as you've accidentally ran over the neighbour's dog, you should always start with the good news first. The money they're now going to save on dog food. Or in our case, the Killzone servers are now back up and running. No word from Sony as to why, was it Jim Ryan accidentally spilling coffee on the servers, or a vigilante Karen doing God's work? I guess we'll never know. But let's all at least rejoice in some Killzone multiplayer whilst we can. And now we get onto some of the bad news. Well, it seems the Vita has lost one of its most prominent exclusives, with Persona 4 Golden now on the PC via Steam. Guess we can't be too shocked at this point, with the emergence of Persona brand being so popular, that Atlas would want to bring Persona 4 Golden to a wider audience, but still, it hurts though. And if that wasn't bad enough, well, things are about to get worse. Rattalika Games, one of, if not the current largest publisher of games on the PlayStation Vita, have called it quits with the platform. Yep, that's right, no more Rattalika games. Even those that were planned for release like Gun Crazy. They've confirmed to me that the team has now fully moved on to PlayStation 5 development. So it's definitely a sad day for many, including myself, as they were one of the few publishers putting out titles consistently, truly marking this year as the handheld's last. 2020 is going to claim another victim. So I guess it's time to press F for Rattalika games. And oh yeah, Jim, if you're watching this, I accidentally ran over your dog. So with that crappy news out of the way, let's get into what I've been playing this month on the PlayStation Vita. So this month I've played barely nothing, mainly because one game was taking up all my time, which I'll get into in a little moment. But first up is Hoggy 2. This is a puzzle game which starts out simple enough and then gets incredibly hard. It's the type of game that I'll leave on the Vita and go back to every now and again because some of the puzzles, if you're not using a guide, really touch the brain. So it's going to take me a while to get through every single one. But it's a good functional game. If you're into puzzle games, you'll get quite a bit of enjoyment out of this. It really ramps up with different mechanics and aside from the quick difficulty spike, I really enjoyed this game. Like I said, there's a lot of game to it so it will take you a while if you're not using a guide. But if you want a nice puzzle game that you can just pick up now and again, then I definitely recommend Hoggy 2. Now this next game is the one that's been taking up all my time this month and once again I'll be butchering its name and that's Utawari Rimono Prelude to the Fallen. Now before I got into this game I had different expectations of what it would actually be. I thought it was more of a tactical game but once you actually start playing it you realise that it's 99% visual novel. The gameplay aspect of tactics is few and far between and in fact it took me a good maybe two hours before I even got into the gameplay as it's very visual novel based and I wish that they would have given you more experimentation with the visual novel aspect because it's merely reading, there's no interaction, there's no choice driven or anything like that. The story itself is similar to the anime that I did watch a long time ago and it's told well, it's an enjoyable story, it's got a lot of mystery behind it but once you actually do get to the gameplay which is basically a grid based tactics game it's quite simple, you do end up getting more abilities and stuff as you go on that makes it a bit more in depth but as I said this is not what I was expecting, I was expecting the opposite way, I was expecting at least a 50-50 between visual novel and the tactics gameplay but it's not, it's really heavily based in the visual novel so I was a little let down with that but it's a long game and if you don't mind a ton of visual novel stuff with a few sprinkles here and there of actual gameplay then I recommend it for you but if not if you're just looking for gameplay then I'd uh, stay away from this title. And that's all I've played this month. Hopefully with uh, Utah Wairi Mono out the way I can now move on to a few other titles I've got planned but let's get into what's coming out next month on the PlayStation Vita. First up is a game that already released in the US last month and it's now in Europe this month and that's Demon's Tear Plus. Dungeon RPG roguelike with arcade and adventure elements, enter the dungeons of King Fosgar and destroy his demonic minions. Combining the best elements of Xenon Valkyrie Plus and Riddled Corpses EX, this is the latest game in the Diabolical Mind trilogy. 
Fosgar, a hated king attracted by demonic rituals, turned into a dark and diabolical being, destroying almost all of humanity and flooding the world with monsters. This story became a legend and peace returned to the land. A thousand years later, a mysterious pit appears in the village with a huge earthquake where an evil aura emanates from. Will you be the hero to save this world? So Vita gamers in Europe can enjoy Demon's Tear Plus this month. And next up, another game that's also out right now, and that's Pick-A-Picks Pieces 2. Pick-A-Picks is a picture logic game, sometimes known as Picross, Nonogram or Hanji, where whimsical pixel art pictures are created by solving puzzles. In Pick-A-Picks Pieces 2, large pictures have been split into a number of smaller pieces. Each piece is a puzzle grid, and by solving them all you'll form a mosaic that reveals a spectacular final image. Play alone or solve puzzles with friends. Co-op play supports up to 4 players using any combination of controllers, touchscreen controls can be used in handheld mode. And on July 7th, we've got Crypto. After a short delay, the PlayStation Vita version of this game finally releases. Crack the code to reveal the quote in this classic cryptogram puzzle. Decrypt the ciphers to find 180 funny and inspirational messages. I believe this was already out on the PS4 and it's now on the Vita. And on July 14th, we've got Awesome P2, the next chapter of this classic platforming game. Greedy P is back in the game. Dark dungeons and deadly traps. Everything is green and there's lots of gold everywhere. And on July 24th, we've got a, a mystery title. All I know about this one is it's from Sometimes You, and it's going to be a, a horror simulation type game. So if you've got any guesses, leave them in the comments. And finally, it's a game that might come out at the end of this month, or it might slip to August, and that's the Epic Word Search Collection 2. Epic Word Search puzzles are huge, and they're back in this second Epic Collection. With over 1600 words to find in each puzzle, and new categories including America, Monsters, Rock Music, and The Summer. Countless hours of word searching await you. And if you were looking to order some physical PS Vita titles this month, well, you're in luck, as Play Asia have opened up pre-orders for two physical Vita titles this month. And first up is Xeno Crisis. This is limited to 2,000 copies, and it has quite an interesting history actually. And next up is Gambare Super Strikers, and this is limited to only 1,000 copies, so be sure to pre-order those. I'll leave links in the description below. We've still got the giveaway going on, so if you want to get yourself a free Vita game, head on over to Crash Landed and share your Vita game collection, whether it's physical or digital. And that's it for this month, I hope you're all well. As always, don't forget, Vita means life.